On a rainy September Friday, I visited Ken Ham's $100 million paperweight in Williamstown, Kentucky. I went to the Ark Encounter. Yeah, that's me, under a borrowed umbrella, standing in a suspiciously appropriate rainstorm. No, not that kind of rainstorm. An actual rain. One that did not last for 40 days and 40 nights, which is really good, because Ken Ham's Ark was looking a little rough around the woodwork, presumably due to the elements, which prompts the question of how Ken's actual Ark might have fared on actual seas. But that is another video for another time. Now, I don't know what the crowd normally looks like, but on this rainy Friday, this was the view of the outer parking lot. And this was the lot near the gate. These spaces presumably filled by religious homeschoolers who thought that Ken Ham's Creation Museum was a scientific tour de force. Here's one of the first things I discovered. The Ark isn't really an Ark. The back half of the structure is actually a building, which is something I don't remember hearing about at all the fundraising press conferences. I walked around the structure, back to the Ark side, past the suffocating crowds, and I was joined by my friend and fellow activist, Matt Dillahunty. Because if you're gonna tour the Ark, you should do so two by two. Here's one of the first things I saw inside the exhibit. It was a wood carving. Now, it's hard to make out what's happening. To me, it looks like Dumbledore levitating a tiny, like, bathtub toy arc while standing next to a snake and a severed leg with the top of the carving populated with various animals under a giant phoenix. And Jesus, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know what it's supposed to represent. And for the record, it was one of the more sensible exhibits on display. I saw a bunch of crates. Apparently, this is where they keep the Ark of the Covenant. I got to see Bambi while I was there. Now, from this exhibit, we can infer that Noah ran one of the world's first puppy mills. Go ahead, Google puppy mill. Those awful places where breeders keep dogs in tiny cages with various apparatus to deliver food and water. Look it up and then look at this section of the Ark Encounter. Had Noah built this sucker today, the Humane Society would not be happy. The good news is, at least the Ark was apparently built to code with sprinklers, you know, in case God decided to punish somebody with fire. Noah's family was there to greet us near the entrance. Now notice the various ethnicities of each of the wives. According to the Ark Encounter, Noah's wife, who did not look 500, was imagined as somebody who might look like the great, 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 etc. grandmother to all of humankind. Japheth's wife was imagined as more European. Ham's wife was more African. And Shem's wife was a mixture of pleasing browns, which might explain several ethnicities. Now, you mix together this potpourri of traits and you sprinkle in some incest. And voila, you procreate and produce the thousands of ethnic groups that we see on the earth today. Thanks, Noah. Also, one of the first things I noticed were these curious light fixtures inside the ark. They just struck me. I mean, I don't know. They had a strangely testicular quality. You see what I'm talking about? I saw a few more animals here and there in various cages. Lots of storage for water and food and dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs. I bumped into a painting of Kenny Loggins. I just love his music. I learned at the Ark Encounter one of the reasons for humankind's descent into darkness and the fall of man was civilization. That's right, we became too civilized to remain good. I stumbled upon this fantastic diorama. It depicts pre-flood wickedness. People back then weren't thrown to the lions. They were thrown to the, to the dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, Ken. Ken Ham, you just cracked me up, man. The evil continued just begging for a great and global flood. Humankind sacrificed babies. We participated in all kinds of carnality, and we were generally horny. 
There were more cages, various cages, not many relative to the size of the Ark, but enough to get to your attention. Many of these cages relatively tiny, which gave the few animals we saw almost no room to move or maneuver. But they were stuffed, so I guess this was not a problem. But in the real Ark, I'll bet the raptors were pissed. We learned in the Ark Encounter how thousands of tons of animal poop might have been routed to a huge, animal-powered Uber toilet. A big toilet house within the boat. You know, I wonder if they built it with shittim wood. For the kids, they had a section called Fairy Tale Ark, which I thought was redundant. The Ark had these various stations for growing vegetation. There were crew quarters for Noah and his family, pretty swank quarters, if I may say. Which is good, they would definitely need to rest, considering that the Ark would mean lots and lots of walking through lots and lots of empty space. In truth, not much in the way of animals, just lots of open air, some wood, some pottery, a few stuffed creatures, and tons and tons of guilt. The Ark Encounter is loaded with guilt. Guilt for being born human. Guilt for being so icky and sinful. Guilt for making God angry enough to drown us all in the first place. The Ark Encounter certainly was expensive to build. You know, I wonder, how did Noah manage to build an Ark with only trees and tar? While it took Ken Ham over a hundred million dollars, a huge construction crew, and state-of-the-art equipment. You know, I wonder what a hundred million dollars might have done to help disaster relief victims or build shelters for the homeless or feed hungry children or provide medicines to the sick or fund cancer research or provide tangible benefit for any of the countless worthy needs and causes that are supposed to be God's good work. That's pretty much it. Some empty space, a few animals, lots of wood. Lots of stuff on the walls you're supposed to read. All at an asking price of $40 a ticket, not including the $10 to park. Thou shalt not steal. My friends, at the end of the tour, I was struck again by the opinion that the Ark Encounter is warped and not because of the rain. It's a bogus story sold to adults and a lie told to children. It's a church masquerading as a Kentucky tourist attraction, and it's a tragic waste of resources. The one upside was this. Inside the Ark Encounter, Matt Dillahunty and I discovered one moment of convergence where we and Ken Ham absolutely agree. The placard said, If I can convince you that the flood was not real, then I can convince you that heaven and hell are not real. Hey, Ken. You're absolutely right. <laughs>